That's a good movie. Yeah, that is a great movie. watch that one again. I haven't seen that for a while. You don't know who... All right, it's on. <laughs> Technical difficulties, just a second. to worship everybody on this Christmas Eve Eve evening. <laughs> Fall my Eve's in there. Uh, welcome to worship as we um, come together and um, worship our Lord. And we are going to um, follow our Christmas Eve service a little bit, but we've got some lovely musicians to my right over here that are going to help assist in, in um, worship tonight. And um, we'll hear a message from Pastor Peter later on as well with a little surprise in the middle from the kids. So don't cry, because I did. All right, well, as we um, come together, let's open up in, in worship and prayer. Hey, God, we thank you for this day, even though it is white, and we thank you for the snow, for a white Christmas. God, we thank you for keeping us safe um, in our homes and, and wherever we are listening and watching this, God, that you would open our hearts and our minds to experience you and your message tonight and whenever uh, we're listening or watching this, God. We thank you for this time of worship and ask that you would bless it and let it be a blessing to those that are listening. We thank you, God, for all these things, and we pray for a blessing on this worship service and in our hearts. And we pray all these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Many ages ago, in the 5,100 and 99th year of the creation of the world, 
from the time when God in the beginning created the heavens and the earth. In the 2,957th year after the flood, in the 2,015th year after the birth of Abraham, in the 1,510th year from Moses and the going forth of the people of Israel from Egypt, in the 1,032nd year from David's being anointed king, in the 60th, 65th week according to the prophecy of David, Daniel, in the 194th Olympiad, the 752nd year from the foundation of the city of Rome, the 42nd year of the reign of Octavian Augustus, the whole world being at peace. Jesus Christ was born, God made flesh. We are gonna start off with the first hymn, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. <coughs> candle and we're really excited that we get to celebrate Christmas with you from afar tonight. So um, Pastor Peter and I are going to read through this and Jonah will light our candles. Our season of waiting is over and the Savior of the world is here. As we light the Christ candle we join our voices with all the saints to praise the holy name of the Lord. Oh sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. The great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is the, to be revered above all gods. God is worthy of our praise this day and every day. Together we will worship Emmanuel, God with us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, we come to a time of confession this evening and we are basing this off of John 1, 1 through 14. And um, if you would join me in the time of confession and forgiveness. Rejoicing in the good news that God and sinners are reconciled in Christ, let us confess our need for forgiveness.
Dear Jesus, this most holy of nights brings us gladness, some grief, and some joy. Gladness because you left the splendor of heaven's glory to come to a dark and cold world, to bring the light and the warmth of your kingdom to a world so in need of your love, your peace, and your joy. Grief because you came into the world, yet the world did not receive you. You came to your own, and your own did not welcome you. And still today, people turn away from you. We turn away from you, God. Sin still scars your creation and the hearts of your own people. And joy, because you offer perfect forgiveness and full cleansing to all who acknowledge their need of you. Cleanse our heart tonight, God, so that we may, be, we, we may welcome you as long as we live. And certainly as long as you welcome us God, we are to be called to praise and to worship, to serve, and to confess and to be guided by you. God, you are good and you are filled with love and peace. And let us remember that tonight as we worship. Amen. All right. We are going to sing some songs of angel praises as we enter into that proclamation the angels came. And if you were here on Sunday, you got a glimpse of what angel meant. Pastor, I'll let you answer the question, what does angel mean? It means messenger of God. Yeah, and so angels came pretty dramatically <laughs> um, like each time. There's a message of God right there that it's snowing outside and... and um, the lights are flickering. The angel's coming. The proclamation of Jesus is here. So um, let us sing a couple songs here. Um, the first verse of Angels from the Realms of Glory and Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So our readings from tonight come from the first one from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in the darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken on as the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The psalm for today is Psalm 96, and we will read responsibly. Yeah, do you have yours? I don't have them. You don't have them? don't have them. Is it the glory to God in the highest? Or I can find no, it's, it's on the, um, the computer. Jonah could read it. It's on the slides, Jonah. Here. It's on the song. We need this. Pause for reflection. <laughs> Pause for reflection. <laughs> or hurry up during the blizzard. <laughs> is the camera on or is it on the computer? It's on you. Okay, you can turn it to the computer and then you can go to the song and respond with the dark colored print. Just flip till you get to the song. Got it? All right. Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations and God's wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. More to be feared than all gods. As for the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But you, O Lord, have made the heavens. Majesty and magnificence are in your presence. Power and splendor are in your sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due the holy name. Bring offerings and enter the courts of the Lord. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before the Lord, all the earth. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is king. The one who made the world so firm that it cannot be moved will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy at your coming. O Lord, for you come to judge the earth. You will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with your truth. Second reading comes from Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He, he, he it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Here ends the readings. Now we have a special treat.
A reading of the Christmas Gospel from the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heavens, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the gospel of our Lord. It's kind of fun to be the guest preacher today. And I thank Kristen and Jonah and Mr. Dooley for allowing me to co-opt part of their service. <clears throat> Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you want to yell at me for the weather outside, you can go ahead and do that because I've been praying for a snowstorm on Christmas since last August. When I was thinking about putting this together. So yes, it is my fault, and I apologize, but it's great. Blessed Christmas Eve to you all. What a night this is. Full of all sorts of things, many of them familiar. We gather tonight to hear once again the old familiar lessons of Scripture that point to the Christ child. To sing what for many of us are old familiar carols that have surrounded us with an earthly reflection of that multitude of the heavenly host. To gather and sing glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. Yes, indeed, this is a great night. It can also be a challenging night. On the one hand, we need and maybe even crave a touchstone of those familiar passages in the midst of a world that is now ravaged by pandemic discord, and God knows what all else. On the other hand, we may wonder, we may have questions, we may have doubts, we may have fears. Whatever it is we bring to the table, we bring them on this night, and we settle in. We settle in ready to let the story wash over us and the music perhaps uplift and inspire us or at the very least, help us to recall memories of Christmas past. We settle in, and we get comfortable. Now, don't be mistaken. Getting comfortable is not a bad thing by any stretch. I like to be comfortable. Comfort for us denotes a place of rest, a place of safety and security, and perhaps a place of peace. And it can be found in many places and in many things. And there is nothing wrong with finding this Christmas story comforting and comfortable. That is a good thing. 
But in the midst of all this comfort and in the midst of all this familiarity, I would call to mind one simple thing. I would remind you of who we meet on this day. For all its comfort, we meet this text and this night in a different place than we have ever been before. Because we are different people than we were a year ago. People have been filled with different experiences. Some of them good, some of them bad. Some may be walking a different road and perhaps a harder road than ever before. And this is what truly challenges us about this night. Because our questions are different, perhaps deeper. Our hopes and fears are different. Our longings are different. Thus, for all our nostalgia and comfort, we meet this proclamation, this child in our midst, in a very different place and in a very different way this year. We are confronted with the reality that we cannot gather as we wish. We may feel cut off from family and friends, those most dear whose presence has always heralded the season and its activities. Some of those that we hold most dear may be celebrating in heaven this year. And we are beginning to face the reality that for many of us, perhaps all of us, we may never be able to go back to what was before. Our world has been altered, our community has been altered, and we do not yet know what the full extent of those changes and challenges will bring. As we perhaps long for what was, we are confronted with what is. And here it is that we meet God in the flesh. In this thin place of tension between what was and what is and what will be. This is where the proclamation of the angels to the shepherds and the message of the angel Gabriel to Mary herself are at their most potent and most poignant. For God meets us in that thin place. He doesn't wait for us to have all our ducks in a row. He comes to where we are. And so he comes here. In the midst of all the change and kerfuffle. In the midst of all the difference when we long for the, the familiar. And in the midst of our doubts, our fears, our joys and our sorrows, whatever they are, God meets us in this place. I was reminded not long ago of an interview that Martin Sheen gave to Krista Tippett for an episode of her show, On Being. In that episode, Martin Sheen talked about Christmas and the season, and he summed it up perfectly. He said, it is the genius of God to dwell where we would least look for him in our humanity, in the midst of our mistakes, and in the midst of a broken and fearful people. That is what this night is all about. The genius of God that comes to meet us and set up his dwelling place where it is least expected, especially perhaps on those edges and ragged places where he seems not to be. There is where we find him. Those edges and ragged places that house our deepest fears, our deepest doubts, and yes, even our deepest pain and longing. This is where God is. And this is the proclamation of this night. That God is here. Face to face with us and all that we have been and all that we are now. God is here. Face to face with us. To open us up to what will be. God is here, in this thin place, to open us up to a life of forgiveness and grace. And we are known as we are. We are loved as we are. 
and we are forgiven from all that has been so we can enter into the future of what will be. And so tonight I leave you with this benediction from the Church of Scotland. Even if we cannot gather in person, Emmanuel, God with us. But if some tr Christmas traditions have had to go, Emmanuel, God with us. Even if we might not get to hug family and friends, Emmanuel, God with us. Even if we cannot sing Christmas carols beside each other, Emmanuel, God with us. And even if Christmas cheer is harder this year, Emmanuel, God is with us. Amen. song we're going to sing is What Child Is This? What child that would be a time that we would take offering during the service. And just a reminder, um, you can stop any time to bring any offering to the church um, or mail it in or send it in in some way, shape, or form. We just appreciate all of your support um, with that offering as we do ministry um, outwardly and um, in the church as well, still in this very um, interesting, different year. 
Um, and so we thank you for those. And um, as we come now to offering, we have some special music uh, by Jonah and Dan. And we um, want to just pray over those offerings that uh, you, um, whether that's financial or that is um, giving of your talents and your time. And that is another way to offer um, your gifts and talents to the ministry as well. And so we thank you for all those things that you offer, whether that's financial gifts or your gifts and talents that you share with us, um, service to the community or into this um, place as well. So let us pray for all those things. God, we thank you for the many gifts and talents and resources and ways that you um, have blessed us in our life. And we ask that you would help us to have gracious and open hearts to be guided by you, whatever way that looks like, whether that's through our gifts and our talents, our service to you and others, or that's financially. Um, God, you have bigger plans than us and you know what's best and you are guiding us and help us to be open to, to offering all that we have and all of who we are to you and to the people around us that we might serve them um, in this ministry and in this congregation and community that we live in. God, we thank you for the many blessings that you give us and help us to pour those out to others in, in different ways. God, and we thank you for the many gifts um, that you have given each and every one of us. Um, we pray all these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Gloria in excelsis day. We thank you for just waking us up this morning to serve you today and to remember the importance of um, who we are and whose we are, um, God. And we thank you for that identity in you that we have, that we can live and serve you each and every day. Help us to not forget that, um, that you um, have called us by name and chosen us by um, name and know the amount of hairs on our heads 
God, you call us your daughters and sons. God, and man, what a great identity to have, the child of God, the son and daughter of the king. God, we thank you for the king, the king that um, was sent down that night as a baby. And um, we thank you for sending your son to live amongst um, your people and to um, glorify you in every way. Um, God, we thank you for the great sacrifice of your son um, that, um, that night on the cross and, and that morning that he rose. God, we thank you for that power that we have living inside of us. Um, God, the same power that, that rose Jesus from the grave. And we thank you for your son. And um, we remember um, tonight and this season of Christmas, the, the birth of the remarkable birth of your son Jesus and and the without without the birth of Jesus there wouldn't be a resurrection God so it's it's a great night to celebrate and to remember um, just the the power that lies in in that baby Jesus um, the night on his birth and we thank you for the celebration and and God um, as we come to you in prayer um, we come as those shepherds with joy and, and excitement and the wise men bringing gifts, all that they had um, to glorify you. And, and uh, God, we thank you for the many ways that you have guided us um, in our lives and, lives. and we ask that you would guide us more and more each day. Um, God, and we um, ask that you'd help us to follow your light, to follow the light of the world, like the wise men did on that night with the star and the shepherds with the angel. God, we, um, we want to follow you. We want, to, um, want you to be glorified. And God, we pray that you would guide us and allow that light to, to shine brightly through and in us um, as we go about teaching others about you and opening doors for them to experience you um, in the ways that you have gifted us to do so. God, and so we pray um, with response. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Blessed are you, Prince of Peace. You rule the earth with truth and justice. Send your gift of peace to all nations of the world. Blessed are you, Son of Mary. You share our humanity. Have mercy on the sick, the dying, and all who suffer this day. We pray for all those that we know in our hearts, um, our loved ones and our friends that need your healing hand tonight, God. We ask that you would um, heal them if that is your will. God, we know that you are powerful enough to do that. Um, you have the power, um, Almighty, and, and ask that you would heal each and every person that um, are on our hearts and, and in our minds tonight, God. God, we also pray for all those that um, are on the front lines serving you um, in the healthcare um, facilities and as doctors and researchers. God, we praise you for the many um, vaccines that are being sent out for people to, to receive. And God, we pray for all those that are, are receiving that first batch, that it would just be effective and be able to um, um, just push us forward so that that could be um, made known for and available for all people. God, and we thank you for the brilliant minds that you have blessed with knowledge and research ability and um, figuring that out. And, God, we thank you for the amazing um, gift of, of knowledge and of this world. And God, we thank you for blessing um, so many so far with that vaccine and, and pray for all those that um, are going to receive it um, in the near future, in the future, and those that are suffering with COVID. God, I pray that you would um, heal their bodies, give them strength and energy, and allow them to rest and to make wise decisions um, those that know that they have it and those that don't, God, that you would um, continue to keep people cautious and um, during this time as well. God, we thank you for just um, the blessings of, of that vaccine. And um, God, we pray for healing for all those um, that need it. Blessed are you, Son of God. You dwell among us as the Word made flesh. Reveal yourself to us in word and sacrament that we may bear your light to all the world. Amen. Our Father, 
which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Christmas. The light is here! Jesus.